Keeping drawers organized in my shop and especially around my house has been a big problem for me. and It's kind of driving me crazy. So today I'm gonna make eight custom organizers using a variety of different materials and techniques from really easy to a little bit more tech savvy. I'll even have one that can double your drawer storage. I'm Brad from Fix This Build That. Let's build something awesome. Now I do want to address, there are a lot of available products out there that you can just buy right off the shelf. These little clear bins are pretty cool. They come in different sizes. These might work out great for you, but we're living that DIY life. Why would you buy something when you can spend twice as much money and an infinite amount more time and do it yourself, right? All right, we're gonna start super basic and then work our way up. I have been known to take cardboard boxes, cut them up and use them as organizers. So it got me thinking, how can we do something just as easy but that looks way better? And I found this, black foam board. So this cost uh, about six bucks a sheet. You can find this at your local craft or hobby store and this is substantial. So this is nice and thick and I think if we cut this up into strips, it'll have a lot of structure to it and we can use hot glue to put it in. So let's try it out and see how it looks. I went ahead and put together some dividers and put them in there. All I did was cut little strips of the foam board using a straight edge and a utility knife. Then to put them into the drawer, I just used a hot glue gun. And I put a little bit of tape on the wood so that when I remove it, that hot glue won't pull off the finish. Now in just a few minutes, I was able to get some custom dividers here and you can do it any way you want. I'll tell you what, for the cost and the skill level needed, this isn't half bad. Now the next way is another foam product, but it's not rigid core. It is Kaizen foam, and it is basically a lot of layers of foam, and you can get it in different sizes. What this is great for is having a specific spot for a specific tool, and you just put that down, trace around it, and then you can cut the foam out so that that part or piece or tool will fit perfectly in there. So this is the ultimate custom storage that will fit whatever you want to store, like a glove. Now the biggest downside to the Kaizen foam is the cost. This big, thick sheet costs $35. You can get them cheaper in the smaller versions, but that's a lot. So I'm not gonna mock it up here. I'm gonna use it on this chisel drawer. I've got my really nice chisels hanging out with the junky ones. So I'm gonna cut out some Kaizen foam for a nice snug fit for them to keep them protected. So as you'd imagine, the foam cuts very easily. So I'll just use a straight edge like I did before, line it up and use a utility knife to cut through it. I've got this cut down to size and I'm realizing this is so thick I don't really need all that thickness for this. I'd be wasting a lot of foam. So I'm actually gonna rip this in half and I'm hoping I can just kind of separate it and uh, get double duty out of it. I got the foam split in two and <laughs> that was not easy. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you do like, but that was not easy and then show me like. <laughs> now I can just take the tools and start laying them down and I can trace it around them and then cut them out. I actually think flipping these around like this would be a little better because then I can fit them a little tighter together. Now I can just take a Sharpie and I will trace the outline right onto the foam. And I'm using a black Sharpie just so you won't be able to see the outline after I cut it. I could just cut this with this utility knife, but I actually have another one that has a little bit of a smaller blade to it to get the little intricate details in here. So I'm gonna use this guy. Now you can just pop your chisel or whatever you have right down in there. Now it does sit below the surface here, so what I'm gonna do is take the chisel and kind of cut it so that it'll just sit a little bit above. And I'll cut maybe a little finger hole so I can pull it out easily. I added cutouts for a few other tools and now I can just put this into the drawer. And that just fits like a glove with all this custom storage. This looks amazing. Really, it is more for showpiece. And you know, if you're anal retentive, if you are particular and you like the way things look, then this might be the way for you. It is expensive. And of course, you're not gonna be able to stack anything in here, but dang, this looks good. Now the next method is another divider option, except this time using wood strips. Now this is the drawer for my kitchen that we have all our utensils in. And I actually built these drawer dividers in another video. I'll have that linked up right there. If you wanna see the whole build process, you can check that out. This is a, just a drop-in insert that is really easy to make. Let me pull out here and show it to you a little closer. 
Now, this thing is just made from poplar strips that are two and a half inches wide and a half inch thick. And you can buy them in lengths of three feet uh, from the home center. And you don't need any special tools to cut them, just a handsaw and a miter box, and you can get some nice clean cuts for these. And after I got the parts cut to size, all I did to attach them was to pre-drill and use two screws into the wood. And that's why I use the half inch poplar versus a quarter inch, which I think has a better look. This is a little bulky, but it will accept the screws. So it makes it really nice and easy to put together. And when I did have some screw holes that you could see from the front, I just used some wooden flathead plugs and plugged those up and then sanded those flush. So this would be a great option if you did want some wooden dividers, but you only have a limited tool set. All right, I'm really excited on this next way to organize drawers because it does use the wooden dividers again. But this time, instead of using screws as fasteners, we're gonna use 3D printed parts. All right, for this one, I'm going to quarter inch poplar versus the half inch poplar that I just showed you. I think it's a lot more sleek and it won't take up as much room in the drawers. Now I did take these larger pieces and rip them down into two smaller pieces. So both of these pieces you can buy for about $2 each for a three foot length. But the real star of the show are these 3D printed parts right here. So I've really been getting into 3D printing lately and I've been cruising a site called Thingiverse where you can go download models that people have already designed and then 3D print them. I saw some brackets for drawer organizers that I thought were really cool and I'll link those down below. I also wanted to get some practice in Fusion 360 which is a 3D modeling software. So I went ahead and designed my own brackets. After I designed them, I sent them to my 3D printer and I came out with these. These are just the little brackets here. So basically a four-way bracket and a three-way bracket that will exactly fit the quarter inch material that I bought. So all I have to do is grab one of these brackets and slide it over the piece of poplar. So when I add in that second piece, it fits in nice and snug. And that sucker is not going anywhere just on that friction fit. So no fasteners, no glue, no nothing. It's kind of like building with Lego, super fast assembly, and you can use any color that you want for a nice little accent or design. So I just cut up pieces to mimic the outline that we made with the foam. And I'm gonna put these together to show you how fast it goes with the 3D printed brackets. So I'll take out the foam and you can see how easy this comes out with the hot glue here. And now I'll start uh, putting in the brackets here. And then this one in between. So in just a matter of seconds, I can put this all together and I can rearrange it as much as I want. So I could grab another piece, put T-brackets on each end and put another divider in there just that easy. So it's quick and easy to put together, but the rack kind of slides from side to side. So to solve that issue, I made these little end brackets right here. What I can do is put those on the ends and then use some hot glue to attach it to the sides. Now this is definitely my favorite one so far because you can configure it very easily and switch it around with little to no effort so that when things change in your drawers, you can change along with them. Now the only real downside is the time it takes to print all of these. For everything right here, it probably took about four or five hours of printing, but that's okay because it can just run while you're doing other things in the shop or around the house or even sleeping. But if 3D printing is not your thing and you've got a table saw and you're not afraid to use it, this one is for you. We're gonna go back to the wooden dividers here and this time make some joinery on the dividers to make a really quick and simple grid system within the drawer. Now all you need to do is measure your drawer opening and mine is about 19 and three quarters by 14 and a half. So I'm gonna cut down these strips to match those sizes and then start laying out the joinery for the grids. And if you cut all your pieces together at once, it makes it nice and easy. We'll do that as well when we're cutting the joinery. I'm gonna go with a three inch by three inch grid. So on my shorter ones, I'll be able to have three of those notches and on the larger ones, I'll have five of them. Again, you can adjust this however you want, but that's how I'm gonna lay mine out. And so I'll just measure and mark those out and then we can go over to the table saw and cut them. Now these will just fit like a puzzle right into the drawer if we cut them right. After you put in the base row, you can put in the matching tops and you'll have those little half lap joints meet up. Now if you are gonna make a grid like this, I would probably just evenly space it because it looks kind of wonky with the small ones in the middle and the off size ones on the outside. Now the nice thing is, is if you wanted to have a larger opening, you could take these out and then put in your longer items down in here so that it can hold whatever size things that you need. Now dividers are great, but what they aren't really great for is a lot of small parts and kind of like these little nozzles here, or especially screws, different types of fasteners. And what would be great for those are bins. 
I have some extra strips of this poplar and I'm gonna make some super simple bins to fill in this back divider so that we could use it for different types of fasteners. So I'm gonna take some measurements here and figure out exactly the configuration I want. Then I'll take the poplar parts over to the table saw, cut them all to size, and I'll use some quarter inch plywood for the bottoms. Then I'll put everything together with some glue and some pin nails. Me nails are a bit too big. Now you may have seen me spray my table saw blade earlier and I was using this, the WD-40 Specialist Dry Lube. And this is a dirt and dust resistant lubrication that dries really quickly and doesn't leave any kind of residue. So it's awesome for all your bits and blades to help keep them clean. But if you need something that's a little more heavy duty for lubrication, you can use the WD-40 Specialist White Lithium Grease. Now this guy is great for where you have metal on metal contact, like the gears that raise and lower your table saw blade. So this one has long lasting lubrication and is gonna really help prevent wear and tear. So my saw really needs some lubrication. It is barking like a seal. <laughs> I'm gonna use the dry lube right on the rod to smooth that out. Then I'm gonna use the white lithium grease on the threaded rod to get it into the gears. All right, no more barking. There's links in the description for where you can buy your own. And a big thank you to WD-40 brand for sponsoring today's video. And just like that, I've got five little wooden bins that I can put into my storage container. I built two different sizes. I did one that was a two wide and then one that was three wide. But these will fit right inside this little section. And these will be perfect for things like screws, or these little 3D printed nozzles, and I could put whatever in there. I also put on a little lip on the back so that they'd be easy to take out. And I just glued a little strip of the poplar right on there. And you can make as many or as little as you want and use the dividers or just do the whole case. And the nice thing about bins is you can just take those out, take them to the project, use your fasteners, and then bring them back when you're done. So it is a great storage solution. You could even do a whole drawer full of these if you wanted to. Now the wooden bins are great, but it takes a lot of time to make them. Just these five took uh, at least 30 minutes, if not an hour. So doing a whole tray would be a lot. So on this next one, we're gonna do the same idea, except use technology to do it for us. That's right, more 3D printing. These are 3D printed bins. The best thing about 3D printing is that it does the work for you. I think this took maybe three hours to print or so. So it takes a while, but you can be doing other things while it's printing. And the great part about these, is somebody did the work for me to design them. So these are from Alexander Chappelle. I've talked about him before, but he's a great YouTuber who does a ton of awesome 3D printing design. And I purchased these from him. They're available on his website. I will put the link down in the description. And uh, I bought the files and I can print as many as I want. And he's got an entire variety. So you can do all kinds of different sizes in three by three or three by two. I've got a one by three here. And the cool thing is, is he's got these grids for the base and you can see that the pieces here will fit right into them. If I take a few of these bins out, this front one's not gonna slide back into the other one. So that's a really cool feature. And one of the things that I like the most is the configurability. So if I decided that this three by two is not what I wanted anymore, I could pull in six one by one bins. And he even made these little finger holes that have a little spot where you could put a label so that you could really be hyper organized and I love that. So this is another great use for 3D printing in the shop, and I am totally on board the 3D printing train now. And just for reference from a cost perspective, all of these bins that you see right here probably took me about three quarters of a one kilogram roll of filament, and the rolls of filament will cost you between 20 and about $35, depending upon what you use. I'm also gonna list out the 3D printer that I use in all the different supplies down below in the descriptions, so you can check it out and see if 3D printing is something you wanna get into. And here's the one that could double the storage in your drawers, and that's using a sliding tray on the top of your drawer. So this one is for my pneumatic nailers. This comes from my back cabinet, and of course with nailers, you need nails. So I wanted to store those in with them. And the assembly is super easy, just some glue and some me nails, of course, because we're storing brad nails in here. I've even got bins inside the tray to serve as triple storage. I've got labels here for each different size of the me nails and my pin nails here at the end. Then I just glued on the strips on the side, which ride on the top of the drawer. So this is a great way to use the extra storage on top for deep drawers. And the way that you could double your storage is actually have these all the way across from front to back. Now, if you had items that you just didn't use as much down below and then had trays with your most used items on the top, it'd be an excellent way to take advantage of a deep drawer and get double duty out of it. 
If you want more storage and organization ideas, I got videos queued up for you right there. I think you're going to love. I want to give a big thank you to those folks that have been joining the FTBT Builders Club. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.